Hey everyone, before we get this video started, I'd like to announce that I will be at Retropalooza Houston from April 30th through May 1st at the Pasadena Convention Center alongside cool YouTubers The Completionist, The Gaming Historian, The Game Chasers, Trailer Drake, and many more. Links to info in the description, and I hope to see you there. Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here, and happy Goomba Appreciation Day! Never did I think two years ago that people would really take this day of recognition to Nintendo's most underappreciated minions to their hearts. With the original video amassing 800,000 views, I've been wondering how to keep the movement going this year, eventually deciding to take a cultural dive into my Goomba brethren to see what I could find. And what I found not only illustrates the cultural importance of the Goomba, but wrapping up a mystery that has eluded me for years. Now then, According to Super Mario Bros. assistant director Takashi Tezuka, Goombas, or Kribo if you're Japanese, were modeled after shiitake mushrooms and not mm -hmm. chestnuts. And you'd think that'd be the end of it, right? I mean, could a simple fungus have any cultural or historical bearing? Actually, yeah. The shiitake mushroom has an extensive history dating back to the 1200s. However, the first written history of shiitake cultivation comes not from Japan, but China. It was Heizan who chronicled the cultivation of shiitake in the records of Longguang Country, and like so many things before it, Japan soon adopted the process of cultivating the sweet shroom from the Chinese records by one Sato Churyo in 1796. Nowadays, the shiitake mushroom has become a key component for all kinds of everyday foods all over the world. From a key ingredient in miso soup, which is served with almost every traditional meal in Japan, to a Russian pickled delight. That's right, the Goomba's inspiration is becoming a delicacy all over the world. Can't say the same about turtles, can ya? Even in the United States, the demand for shiitake can be high. For a single pound of the spongy stuff can sell as high as $16. I don't see turtles being sold for $16 a pound, have you? But what does it take to grow mushrooms? Do they need a specialized cave like in Stardew Valley? Actually, not at all. The process of growing these profitable caps is actually pretty simple. What farmers would do is first find trees that already had the mushroom growing on it. Next, they would cut medium-sized logs from various hardwood trees like oak, ironwood, maple, and mulberry and place them around the trees where the fungi were already growing. What this does is allow the shiitake spores to quickly find new homes on the freshly rotting wood of the cut logs. And this process didn't involve just a few logs, oh no. Cultivators would create entire fields of identically placed logs around these trees to optimize the growth and harvest of this mushroom. For Bowser, that has to be the easiest way to create army after army of Goombas in each Mario installment. Cut logs, add a few Goombas, wait a month or two, and BAM! Instant army. But if Goombas are shiitake, how do they hurt Mario and Luigi? Well, there is such a thing as shiitake dermatitis, an allergic reaction that causes various rashes and even lesions on the skin. Maybe the brothers have a hereditary extreme case of this. But really, never mind that. Let's finally answer a question as old as the Mario franchise itself. How is it that the Goombas are modeled after shiitake mushrooms, but called chestnuts in Japan? Remember when I said farmers would place hardwood logs around trees that supported shiitake? Another one of those trees just happens to be the chestnut tree, which is prominent in Japan. In a way, it makes the shiitake and chestnut like blood brothers, one and the same. Or, wait. This could explain the relation between Goomblas and Goombas. Though nut and mushroom, they're from the same parent. Wait, that means that prickly Goombas from New Super Mario Bros. Wii and Wii U are chestnuts because of the similar prickly outer shell. Oh man, I gotta go dig into this more. The honor of my people demand it. But while I do that, be sure to check out the original Goomba Appreciation Day video, and maybe you too can feel a reason for the season. Or if you're looking for more culture and gaming, click here to check out my last video talking about Way of the Samurai, a buggy, completely bizarre game, but brings a unique historical perspective to gaming. But until next time everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.